This one's gonna be rife with spoilers. Even though the movie's 66 years old, I feel like I need to warn you. Welcome to the Daily Needs, a daily look at classic films, modern cinema, and the world of professional wrestling. And today I'm talking about the 1960 film Psycho from the mind of Alfred Hitchcock. I know I talked about him uh, just a few weeks back with Notorious, but this film is a more notorious Alfred Hitchcock film. Ah, wordplay. Ew. Shut up. Um, Psycho. Well, it's where do you begin with this movie? This is like the original slasher film. Everyone says Halloween started it, but this is the one that like Halloween and especially Friday the Thirteenth like tried to emulate. Um, even though it didn't do like the horror movie, the slasher movie tropes. There's no gore and there's no like really absurdly violent kills, but. In fact, there's only two, and you don't see any wounds. But that's part of like the, the magic of the movie, is they don't need to show knife-penetrating flesh or buckets of blood. They just need to hint that it's happening, and that sticks with the audience so much more. Um, Psycho follows the story of Marion Crane for about a half an hour as she steals $40,000 and drives to California to meet her boyfriend, and then she's pursued by the police and realizes she makes a mistake, and then she's Brutally murdered in a shower about a half hour in. <laughs> Plot twist. Now the movie's about Norman Bates, the man who uh, whose mother seems to have stabbed her. And he runs this motel. And he tries to clean up the body, hack the body. And uh, the, uh, the investigators are looking for, for Marion. So he's like, I don't know nothing. And it turns out in the end, his mother's been dead for years. And he dresses up as her because he's got split personality disorder or multiple personality disorder, whatever the, the actual name is. They call it schizophrenia back then. They call it like schizophrenia, but it's not schizophrenia. Multiple personality disorder. Multiple personality disorder. I don't have a DRM-7 or whatever they're up to. Handy. It's I actually, think it's five DRM-7. It's actually probably just a psychological break. Something like by that. trauma. Eh, it changes every every couple years. Whatever the socially correct term is for multiple personality disorder. Um, but he keeps his mother's corpse around... And when he um, is, say, aroused or what, ha what have you, the mother side of his brain takes over and just goes mental. Um, great, great movie. Um, it's just interesting watching it 66 years later because that plot twist, I know I said the thing about spoilers. You already knew that if you're watching this. Everyone knows that Norman Bates is his, is, thinks he's his mother. Everyone knows that plot twist now. It's part of like the, the, the pop culture... Uh, consciousness but watching it again this is maybe the third fourth time I've seen this one um, I tried to watch it with the air of not knowing that and watching um, Anthony Perkins portray Norman Bates and he is just the nicest guy he's like he's like a boy in an adult's body that understands he has adult responsibilities but he still loves his mama um, and and you say I have mommy issues she's giving me the worst glare right now you do have mom. Shut up, it's fine. Um, what was I saying? No, he's like just like the nicest guy, and you, you don't see it. And if you don't know that twist is coming, it, it really does hit you when you first see him in, in the, uh, the dress and the wig. <laughs> because it is... He hides it so well. There's little hints. There's always going to be little hints. But they're definitely not noticeable on, quote, the first time through. Um, if you don't know that twist. And the end of the first act when you think the plot's going to be Marion Crane running from the police because they even have that policeman who seems to be stalking her and it seems like he's going to be an important character and this whole story is going to come to an end and it never does her life comes to an end and that's the end of the story the cop doesn't come back that, that used car salesman that, that kind of suspected something never comes back it's just this whole first act is essentially wiped meaningless um, by the, the infamous shower scene. And it's, it's those aspects that you don't think about when you think about Psycho. You think about Norman, but you don't think about that first act too much. And, and you really should, because it's, it's great. And it's great storytelling, and it's great suspense building, and it really hits your normal fears. I spend a lot of time driving, and I worry about policemen, and I know I haven't done anything wrong that I'm aware of. But every time I see a cop on the road, I'm like, is he following me? Is, what's happening? So it's... It really hits your human fears, and he does it so well, and that's why they call Hitchcock the master of suspense, because he really is. 
he really gets it done in this film and it's great and everyone should see it and and go and go see it see the movie that's all I got on Psycho I could probably keep talking but I shouldn't it's getting late um, tomorrow I'm gonna watch uh, something I probably should have watched last summer I think we're gonna finally figure out the uh, Ant-Man vs. Inside Out debate tomorrow which one we should watch <laughs> it'll be one of the two uh, we'll talk it over it's gonna be whatever it says at the end of the video on the slate but until then like share and subscribe leave a comment in the comment section below if you've seen the psycho sequels tell me how terrible they are because I'm curious um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Daily Neats. But until tomorrow, bye.